V-Ray and Cycles, both engines pack a punch, but here's the thing, they don't just compete, they complement different workflows, project types and artist needs. V-Ray into Blender has turned this rivalry into something even more exciting, so let's break it all down. This isn't just about which engine is faster or prettier, we are diving deep to figure out what sets these tools apart, what they bring to the table for Blender users and why you might want to integrate one or both into your workflow. Whether you are a professional artist pushing photorealism to the next level or a hobbyist looking to maximize Blender's potential, understanding these render engines is your secret weapons to creating better and faster results. So let's talk power, tools and where these renders truly shine. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Cycles, Blender's native render engine. Over the years, Cycles has quietly transformed itself into a powerful beast and today we are going to break down exactly what makes it so impressive. We'll cover its strengths, its limits and how it has evolved to meet the demands of artists like you and me. Whether you are a casual Blender user, a freelancer or a studio professional, Cycles has a lot to offer but like all tools, it comes with a story worth understanding. Cycles' biggest leap forward was its introduction to real-time feedback. This is where Cycles began to shine. Picture this, you are tweaking your lighting and adjusting a material and instead of waiting for test renders to complete, you see the result instantly. This real-time feedback has completely changed the way artists work. It's no longer about guessing and hoping for the best. Now you can play around, experiment freely and refine your shots on the fly. It's like having a crystal ball into your final renders, except it's powered by your GPU. And speaking of GPUs, let's talk about advanced GPU acceleration. If you are running a high-powered graphics card like Nvidia's RTX series or AMD's Radeon lineup, Cycles taps right into that hardware, giving you rendering speed that were once unimaginable. This isn't just a minor improvement, it's a performance revolution. With GPU acceleration, you are not just saving minutes, you are saving hours, maybe even days depending on your project. So whether you are rendering a short animation or crafting a photorealistic still, Cycles is now working smarter, faster and harder. But Cycles didn't stop there. Blender's developers introduced adaptive sampling, a feature that feels like magic for anyone working on complex scenes. Here's how it works. Instead of treating every pixel equally, Cycles focuses on the part of your image that needs the most work. The areas that are noisy, messy or still unresolved get extra attention, while clean parts are left alone. The result? Faster render times and cleaner results. Yes, that's what you get. It's like having a team of tiny assistants optimizing your render whilst you sit back and watch it happen. Now let's get real for a second. What makes Cycles truly stand out isn't just its features, it's the way it integrates seamlessly into Blender. This is Blender's engine after all so everything feels like it belongs. You can jump from modeling to shading to rendering without missing a beat. No extra plugin, no clunky export, just a smooth unified workflow. For anyone who has spent time juggling third party tools, you know how precious this is. Cycles keeps you in one software ecosystem and that's a huge advantage especially for freelancers or small studios trying to keep things streamlined and cost effective. But as much as I love Cycles and trust me I do, it's not perfect. Its greatest strength which is physically accurate rendering is also its biggest bottleneck. Cycles is a path tracing engine which means it prioritizes realism above all else. Light bounces, reflections, refractions, it calculates everything to produce stunning results. But here's the catch, 
accuracy comes at a cost. If you are working on heavy photorealistic scenes, just imagine intricate lighting setups, hyper detailed materials or giant landscapes. Render times can start to drag. For smaller projects, this isn't a huge problem. But when you're on a tight deadline, waiting for a render to finish can feel like an eternity. And let's be honest, in production heavy environments where every second counts, speed matters. This is where cycle starts to hit its limit compared to faster render engines like V-Ray or Redshift. Hey, no rush, we'll get into V-Ray soon and place it side by side with cycles in Blender. Cycles has made tremendous strides, there is no question about that, but it still isn't the fastest option on the market when your scene is packed to the brim with complexity. So one might ask, where does Cycles fit in? Okay, for a lot of us, it's exactly where we need it to be. It's free, it's powerful, and it's built right into Blender. If you're working on personal projects, freelance gigs, or small to medium sized animations, Cycles gives you everything you need to produce beautiful results. Its updates like GPU acceleration, adaptive sampling, and real time feedback have turned it into a modern, reliable engine that can handle most challenges you throw at it. That said, if you are tackling massive production or photorealistic renders on tight schedules, you may need to look at other engines to complement Cycles. So what's the takeaway? Cycles has grown up. It's no longer just Blender's default engine. It's a legitimate contender in the world of 3D rendering. Whether you are an artist crafting still images, animating short films, or just experimenting for fun, Cycles brings you braille power without pulling you out of Blender's ecosystem. And as Blender continues to evolve, you can bet Cycles will keep getting better, faster, smarter, and more efficient. For now, though it remains a shining example of what open source software can achieve, a tool that empowers creativity, delivers stunning results, and keep raising the bar with every update. Cycles isn't just lighting up your renders, it's lighting up the future of Blender itself. Okay, before I get into V-Ray, I just want to let you know how bad my YouTube analytics get with each video I post. I don't know what the reason may be. I'm sure there are a couple of issues that I might have to work on and I am ready to improve whatever reason it may be that's causing my analytics to depreciate. Kindly let me know how best I can improve the videos either via email or in the comment section below. And don't forget to share your thoughts on the topic for today, V-Ray vs Cycles in Blender. Also, I'm going back to my in-depth movies and software reviews starting 2025, so kindly hit the like button, subscribe and share for more contents like this. Now, let's talk about V-Ray, the industry titan developed by Chaos Group. For years, V-Ray has been the gold standard across fields like architectural visualization, advertising, and even Hollywood-level film production. It's a renderer synonymous with precision, performance, and photorealism. And here's the kicker, as of its last update, V-Ray's recent integration into Blender has elevated it to an entirely new level and I'll tell you why in a bit. This isn't just about bringing a new tool into Blender, it's about transforming what's possible inside the software. So one might ask, what makes V-Ray so powerful? First and foremost, it's all about hybrid rendering. Unlike many engines that rely solely on CPU or GPU resources, V-Ray combines the two seamlessly, pushing your hardware to its absolute limit. And the result? You get faster renders without sacrificing quality. That's what you get. Whether you are rendering small animations or giant photorealistic scenes, V-Ray's hybrid system gives you the flexibility to extract every ounce of power from your machine. And let's not forget V-Ray's global illumination and physically accurate shaders. These are tools designed to simulate natural light in a way that feels almost indistinguishable from reality. But where V-Ray really set itself apart now is with its workflow optimization tools. One of the standout features here is V-Ray Frame Buffer or VFB. 
this is not just a render window it's a full-on control center imagine rendering your scenes and being able to tweak your lighting adjust colors and denoise the final image all in real time without constantly jumping back into blender's compositor the vfb puts the power of post processing right at your fingertips and that alone saves you time energy and frustration now let's talk about speed because if you've used cycles by now you should know that render times can feel like a bottleneck on heavy project v-ray brings a secret weapon to the table it's ai powered denoiser this is a game changer for anyone working under tight deadlines instead of waiting for noisy previews or test renders v-ray's ai denoiser cleans up your image in a fraction of a time delivering fast clean results while you are still working. This means you spend less time staring at your loading bars and more time refining your art. And Chaos Group didn't stop there. Another incredible feature is Chaos Cosmos, a massive library of pre-built assets designed to speed up your workflow. Need high quality materials? They are there. Looking for realistic HDRIs? Chaos Cosmos has them. Need ready-made models like furniture, plants, or vehicles? Boom, they are all at your disposal. This is where V-Ray flexes its real power. With access to Chaos Cosmos, you can shave hours, yes, hours off your production time without compromising on quality. Whether you are visualizing an architectural masterpiece or building a film quality scene, V-Ray removes the grant work so you can focus on being creative now let's address the elephant in the room render quality v-ray's algorithms like its famous light cache make a real difference light behaves naturally in v-ray with shadows reflections and refractions calculated to near perfection if you are after photorealism v-ray is an engine that delivers on that promise whether it's glass metal water or sunlight pouring through a window, V-Ray's rendering engine handles it without unmatched precision. If you are loving the video, a sub to my channel will be absolutely Let's dive into the big debate. V-Ray vs Cycles, two rendering powerhouses, both now accessible right inside Blender. The truth is both engines are fantastic, but they serve different purposes and cater to different types of artists. So if you've been asking yourself which one you should use, let's break it down. Cycles, Blender's native rendering engine is a dream for artists who want an integrated, no fast experience. It's free. It's open source and it works straight out of the box. You don't need to worry about installing plugins, setting up licenses, or diving into overly complicated workflows. With Cycles, you set up your scene, hit render, and boom, you've got solid results. For smaller projects, stylized animation, or hobbyist works, Cycles is a total workhorse. It's incredibly user-friendly too, which means new Blender artists can start rendering right away without hitting any major learning curves. Plus, it's a native part of Blender's ecosystem, so you can smoothly jump between modeling, texturing, and rendering all in one software. But then comes V-Ray, and here's where things get really interesting. V-Ray is the renderer you turn to when you need something extra. We are talking about heavy-duty photorealistic projects, large-scale architectural visualizations, complex VFX shots, and cinematic interiors that demand hyper-realistic lighting and shading. V-Ray's biggest advantage lies in its hybrid rendering system, which uses both CPU and GPU resources simultaneously. That means V-Ray squeezes more power out of your hardware, making it significantly faster for rendering those heavy detailed packed scenes. Now let's talk about value. Sure, Cycles is free, there is no beating that price tag, but for professionals, Time is money, and this is where V-Ray shines. If you are working on client project, 
tight deadline so anything that demands top tier result the race efficiency and tool set essentially pays for themselves the ability to render faster optimize your workflow and produce professional grid visuals is priceless add chaos cosmos into the mix which i took down to explain a huge library of pre-built assets hdris and materials and you are shaving hours of production time for freelancers and studios juggling multiple projects that time saved translates directly into profit there's another big reason why V-Ray stands out, scalability and collaboration. V-Ray integrates seamless across multiple DCC tools like Maya, 3D's Max and Unreal Engine. If you are a Blender artist working alongside teams that use different software, V-Ray becomes the glue that holds everything together. It ensures consistent results across pipeline, which is a game changer for collaborative high-end productions. But let's be real. V-Ray isn't built to replace cycles, it's built to complement it. One might ask, so why should I care about V-Ray in Blender? Cycles is just fine for me. Okay, V-Ray in Blender takes Blender, a tool that's already impressive, and supercharges it. It gives you access to Hollywood grade rendering, industry standard workflows, and tools that makes your life easier. Whether you are a freelancer looking to compete with bigger studios or a hobbyist who wants to push their renders to the next level, V-Ray in Blender is the bridge that connects artistry to performance. In the end, V-Ray isn't just a renderer, it's a workflow revolution. It's the toolkit that helps you create better work, faster and with fewer headaches. So if you are looking for that next big step in your 3D journey, V-Ray in Blender might just be the upgrade you've been waiting for. Okay, if you've loved this video, then a sub to my channel will be much appreciated. Until my next video, peace.